Hello, hello. Welcome to Confidence Through Cabaret, the podcast or the vodcast, depending what you're watching. If you are listening to this on podcast, just note that there is a video version of it on YouTube channel, Confidence Through Cabaret YouTube channel. Uh, check the vodcast playlist and you'll be able to see the video. So you'll be able to, to see the whole episode. If you're watching this on video, there is also a podcast version. Search Confidence Through Cabaret anywhere you get your podcasts. I am Heather Jean, your host, and I am so happy to be here with the gorgeous Ramonda. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you for the invitation. It's so great. I love how we can connect across the world. Yes, yes, it is. So Ramonda, it's so, do you want to? Nowadays. Yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, sometimes there's delays and sometimes the technology isn't perfect. But, you know, we always say at Confidence Through Cabaret that, you know, we're perfectly imperfect. Uh, we don't edit. We we just show up as we are and we are all doing our best. And that's authentic. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Ramonda, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Um, I was born and raised in Curacao. I studied abroad in Holland. Then uh, after 10 years, I came back to um, the Caribbean and I decided to station in St. Martin, where I currently am. I'm working as a behavior specialist and I also have my own uh, coaching and behavior business, Mindful Elevation. Yeah, and I've been a guest. I've been a guest on Mindful Elevation and it's it's so much fun. What's your what's your kind of vision for Mindful Elevation? What what's that about? Um it actually started well I always wanted to help out other people. Um, since small, I was the one that, oh, you fell down. Can I help you? Do I need to get a, pl a pl plaster to um, put on the wound? Do I have to give you a hug or anything? So for me, it was always helping other people. And um, at one point, I decided, you know what? It's enough of waiting, waiting till the perfect time. So I decided indeed to just uh, start. And uh, my vision is to actually help women because for me, um, no matter how we see it, unconsciously, we are the center of everything. Every, everybody gravitates to you. So for me, it is as long as the woman is in a good place, they're happy, they are able to continue helping um, others. So for me, it's mostly helping women with the stress and then turn their power, their stress into power and purpose. Beautiful. And I know we've had a conversation before about stress. What's your what's your kind of advice for avoiding stress? Is there a way to do that? There, yes, there are several ways actually, and it's also uh, depending on what type of uh, person uh, you are. So um, for me, for example, what works very well is if I can do my exercises, if I can take uh, some time uh, for myself to just relax, not uh, having to think about the job or anything that have to be done, being able to read my book or, or take a walk. So there are several ways that indeed you can work um, on the stress or actually to prevent for you to have stress. So it's so not to try to take on everything because it's not everything you need to take on personally. As women, though, it's really easy to feel like we do have to take those things on. Even though we know in our mind we don't, we do tend to live in that space of taking everybody else's things on, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that comes back to what I said before, because we unconsciously or, or consciously we feel like we are the center and everybody coming to you for whatever is going on in their life indeed most of us feel like okay i need to be helping out that person or i need to be doing abc for for the rest of the household to be able to continue um running or even on the job you feel as a female that you are the one that have to take on a lot of task and indeed it, it makes you worry it makes it creates stress because you can do million of things in one minute so 
Yeah. I think the other thing that a lot of women struggle with is that we we feel like when we take time for ourselves, then it's us being selfish and we should spend that time doing more for other people. Yes. Yes. That's so it, true. It's but, great to uh, hear you say about reading books and going for a walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, because the same as we thinking that we need to be helping uh, the other person for the other person to be good, we need to try to accept it for ourselves as well, that we have to be okay as well. We have to be in a good place and we can only achieve that by taking care of ourselves. If we break down yeah. tomorrow, then you are not there anymore to be able to do all what you want to do. That's really true. And it's, I think anybody listening that overcommits or overserves, I think we all understand that. But there's a difference between understanding it and doing it. How do you yes. help people to be able to, to not feel selfish in self-care? Yeah, yeah, it's it's indeed it's easy talking, but indeed when you have to put it in practice, it's more difficult, especially because you're conditioned in a certain way. But then one of the way that I uh, help my clients is just one small step at a time. Um, and then what you can do too, for example, if you have a partner and you want a five minutes time, try to sit with your partner and discuss that, listen, these are the things that's going on with me. I would like to every day when I come home, just five minutes for myself, decompress, and then I can give you all the attention. Or um, even on the job, it, I know it's difficult, especially during these times, you can come with demands and all those kind of things. But majority of us we have our task description that we have to do and of course we might take on a little bit more here and there but then for you for yourself sometimes it's also good to say okay i done this and i went the extra step but next time can you possibly come earlier with whatever you want me to do so i have a little bit more time to do it if you want me to um present a, a proper and good report for example it's not easy yeah. little tip every time you have to remind yourself or maybe even put on the mirror that you pass by every day that okay today i'm going to take five minutes or i'm going to try to do this for myself it, it's a reminder every day it, it really is a, a, a good reminder and i i am a huge fan of mirror work. I I um, do mirror work every morning. I make commitments. And it is such a good reminder that I have commitments to myself as well. So commitments for me personally, as well as commitments for, you know, the family and work and so on. I was just uh, thinking about yesterday, I was thinking about the uh, commute to work that a lot of us used to have that we don't have anymore because in the UK we're as of yesterday uh, encouraged to return to our office space for the first time in a long time and mm -hmm. for a lot of us we don't want to have a long drive and in traffic or public transport but uh, it's a it's a good time to sort of be able to sit and read a book or listen to a podcast or have some quiet and by working from home for so long a lot of us have stopped doing that and filled the time with mm -hmm. more things around the house or more work. Yes, yes, correct, correct. But even when you're saying about using your time when you're driving to for yourself to think about whatever you would want, um, because I know that there are people that when they're driving, especially if when they are in traffic, they're getting more aggravated than that they're taking that time to... <laughs> Take it easy. So even with that, you kind of like have to be open minded to be doing things a little bit uh, different than uh, how you used to do it. And in the that is so true. 
<laughs> and in the house, it's so easy for you to be able to um, indeed to go do all kind of tasks because, hey, that thing still needs to be done or the dishes still need to be washed or, you know what, let me go and sweep because I'm home anyway. I can continue doing the work a little bit later. So <laughs> that's indeed very easy to do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that that is easily done. I think I think the thing, you know, when when we think about things like traffic or being overwhelmed is to to remember that we have a choice about how we respond. So if the traffic mm -hmm. is is making us late or it's taking a long time or somebody's a crazy driver, then, you know, it's we are choosing our response. Yes. Yes. We're always choosing how we're reacting, and we can leave that depending on the other person. It's how you decide to react, and that's the reaction you're getting back as well. So, yeah, instead of getting aggravated in traffic, stay calm because you can move faster anyway. If that person cut you off, that person cut you off already. You can't do nothing about that. So so it is to, yes, to try to stay calm, try to stay in your Zen mood or whatever you are, listen to your music. Yes. Be patient. So, <laughs> so well, and so that brings me to the name of your business is Mindful Elevation Caribbean. So, so mindful suggests to me that you're talking about being present in the moment. Is that fair to say? Yes, yes. It so was indeed, where does mindful um, elevation come from? Um, it came actually from because me myself have been suffering from stress for a very long time because I had my job, I had the another business that were taking a lot of time a lot of energy um so at one point the stress was so bad so um i indeed started to looking for ways how to handle with it how to um, work on it so um i didn't know about um the the word mindful um at the time but it was for me more to okay I'm stressing out about things that have to happen in a week, in a few days, or even in a month. But I'm forgetting that to begin with are things that have to be done today and that I'm here today. I don't know if I'm going to be there next week. So it's best for me to um, put the best version of me today and try to as much as possible to enjoy the day, even though things might not go in the way I want in, for example, the business of the work. But be here try to enjoy it instead of worrying my mind is very analytical and i want to be thinking about millions of things that are happening in the future so i really had to teach myself so that's how i actually came um, with the name and then to try to elevate yourself to try to better yourself every day there's something new that you can learn for you to be a better person to um, do your things in a different way, in a more positive way. And then, of course, Caribbean, because I live in the Caribbean. I'm from the Caribbean. So <laughs> so that's how it started. It's beautiful. So how did you go about, get, you know, if, you, if you're somebody that, that worries about things and you're thinking about, you know, either past or future, how did you, how did you go about being able to almost condition yourself to be in the moment and mindful? Mm -hmm. Um, it took quite some time. It wasn't from uh, one day to the next, but it was really trying to change my mindset, being open to trying uh, different things and um, reminding myself every time that, okay, you have these tools, try to use them. It isn't working now or it um, for this week, but maybe next week it, it uh, will work or something from the tool might spark your, let me call it your interest, that it will work. So um, I was always doing exercises, and but I started using that more as my time to just relax, close off my mind, not to think about anything. And um, not even the coach, when they were explaining what I have to do, I wasn't really taking it in but 
because most of the time when you're doing exercise and especially in a group, you will see from the other person what they have to do. And at one point, you will know the names of the exercise, what it is anyway. So, but for me, it was really conditioning myself, taking a few uh, minutes every day, reminding myself that it is okay. There's a solution for every challenge. You just have to sit try to work it out, see how you can work it out. And even remember if that is something that I have to work out or not, whichever situation that was going on. And so those are how I went about it. Not easy. Sometimes I still need to remind myself, but yes. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's really important for, for, for those of us who do tend to think ahead or analyze or sometimes even overanalyze I think it's really important to hear that that it doesn't happen overnight to make those changes it's a work in progress it's yeah. a practice yeah. yeah yeah and I think it is I you know exercise is really great for you know kind of relieving stress for sure um, but it can also be something that really keeps us in that moment because if you're thinking of other things then you can lose it and I think you know, a lot of people are runners and, and when we're running, we can be thinking our mind can be elsewhere. But even just making those small shifts of just remember, reminding yourself where you are and what, what you're seeing and what you're experiencing and what you're enjoying. Um, for me, running is a, is a terrible example because the whole time I'm thinking how much I don't like it. Um, so I'm not enjoying the moment. <laughs> But, <laughs> but I think, you know, I mean, that, that's why I went to aerial work, because with aerial work, if you're not in the moment, you will fall. Right. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. you're, you're at height. If you're thinking about something somebody said earlier, it, you're, you're not yeah, paying attention. And you'll fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so so I think it's I think it's also about, you know, you can go for a walk and still be thinking about something somebody said or what you're going to be worrying about, you know, in the future or creating even mm -hmm. a, a future scenario in your head. But if you can bring it back to what where you are, what you can see, hear, taste, touch and smell in that moment, that is so yes. key. Yeah, correct. And we can be harsh to ourselves neither because, of course, other uh, thoughts will come up and, and you might think about something that has to happen tomorrow. That's normal. But it's like you said, as long as you can bring yourself back to, okay, I'm taking my walk now, so I'm enjoying this. Thank you for the thought, but I'm putting it aside now because I'm taking my walk to relax myself, enjoy the view and whatever is going on around me. And after, if it's necessary, then I will deal with whatever thought came up. So we have to be, we have to be, how do you call it? Positive to ourselves too, not break ourselves down because I want to be walking and I want not to be thinking about anything. But our brain, that's how it works. It, here and there, a thought comes up or, or something that we have to do will come up. So... Yeah, I, I don't usually um, suffer from anxiety, but I know, and two, two of my children do, I, I know that for those of us who do suffer from anxiety, that is a very hard day because we make real scenarios based on our past and, and our imagined future. And that's what I love about your practice, being mindful, is being in that moment. And I, I really think that if we don't do that enough, then we can create a much more anxious state for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. So, so, so the work that you do, uh, you have a Facebook group. Yes, and you I are, do. And you're on Instagram. I am on Instagram and on Facebook, indeed, under the same name. Yes. Right. And then you and then you also do is it one to one coaching that you do or is it group programs? I does do um, one on one coaching and I also does do um, group coaching. And then most of the time um, lately, the group coaching has been, for example, yoga that we just do yoga. And then in between, we just do a few mindfulness and then we close it off with either a breathing or a, a little meditation. So, yeah, 
And so, but it's uh, most of the time it's one on one coaching, and especially because of the COVID too. But um, normally it's a one on one coaching, group coaching. Yeah. I think yoga is such a perfect example of, you know, really being mindful because if you're not, again, you'll fall. If you're in a pose or in a flow and you're not thinking about what you're doing, you, you'll at best not do it fully. But, you know, at yes. worst, you'll fall over or you'll hurt yourself or, you know, and it, and it really is such a great practice of opening space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So when and I'm at, at my stress, I can't open the space and I avoid things like that because I want to close off and, and hold it all in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you and suggest from, opening up then? Sorry, Ramanda. Mm -hmm. Yes, no problem. Um, do a little breathing that you're focusing on your breathing and and try to see if that's when your stress will um, lower down and then you can see if you're able to do some yoga movements and it doesn't have to be like 30 an hour yoga practice but start with a 10 minutes just for you to be moving a little bit but if if you are someone that kind of like close yourself up or, or not being able to open because of the stress, try to do some breathing. Focus on your breathing. Um, see where all your the when you're breathing deep in, feel it going to all your um, body parts. Focus on that, and then uh, like that too. And then of course, it's something that you have to keep on practicing. It's not that I did it now and okay, I'm good now. And from today on, I will not have, no, it's not. <laughs> but everything, it, it's practice. And today might be going good, but tomorrow it might be a little bit less. But then you say, okay, thank you. I was able to do a little bit. So tomorrow or later on, I will try again. So always uh, be mindful of how you're feeling yourself as well. And, and like I said, don't be too harsh on yourself. Everything is a practice, and and because we human beings, we react reacting on different things that's going on around us. You, there are days that are going better than other days. Yeah, I I appreciate how, and you've said it a couple of times here of you know saying thank you to yourself. You know, thankful, thank you for that thought but I'm gonna focus on where I am or thank you for that, you know, going well, or thank you for trying, or, you know, is gratitude a big part of your practice for mindfulness? Yes, yes, it is. I'm, I'm trying to be grateful or not, not trying. I'm doing my best to be grateful for everything, even little things, because I am noticing for myself too, that, by just saying, okay, thank you, I had time to play with my dog, or I had time to even just lay down and read a book for a little bit. Um, I notice that when I'm thankful for um, the little things in life, it makes me, my brain less wanting to go and focus on things that still have to happen in the future because I'm trying to focus on what's happening now and it automatically put a smile on my face and I'm like, okay, but why I was worrying for that other thing so much that actually doesn't even matter at this point. And so for me, great being grateful in, in everything that I'm doing, yes, it's a big part of my life. Yeah, and I noticed and, you say, you don't say I'm trying, you say I'm doing my best to, which is such a lovely expression. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it comes down to the other things that today might be going better than the other day, but I put my, like we would say in Dutch, I get my best being um, for said, I try to put my best foot in front of the other to be able to continue walking. So it's the same. <laughs> as long as you try to work on yourself, to, to be happy for yourself, yeah. That's that's what counts. That's really beautiful. So I wanted to um, just come back to confidence. Does 
the times when you're successful in putting your best forward and in being mindful, it, does that make a difference to your confidence? Yes, a huge difference <laughs> because I'm so, so an introvert. I don't like to talk. I don't like to be out there as in that's how I kind of like feel and I think I portraying myself. So for me doing these type of things, it has really helped with my confidence because it does give me a boost as well that, okay, I know what I want to do. I know my information. And even if I'm not reaching a very large crowd, even if I'm reaching two people, for me, that's already something because I could have stayed in my corner too and not doing what I like to do, not bring out the information. And those two people would not have get it. So um, being grateful, doing my exercise and meditation, yoga, trying to do uh, my best every day. Yes, it has really boost my uh, confidence. I think that's wonderful. And I think I think too many people get too thinking about too much thinking about their how many people are listening are there enough people if there's lots of people then is that too many and it, you know we get in our head again and that you know it, like even two people that you're still re or even one person you're still reaching somebody and not getting you know really into the how many likes how many you know what numbers it, it yeah. really doesn't matter we're just too focused on that stuff now mm -hmm. correct Correct. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I focus on that as well. But um, like, for example, with the interviews that I just do every uh, other week, with that, I indeed really focus on I want to be bringing out the information for people to, in, in, a, in at least in the Caribbean, to break certain taboos. So that is my primary focus. And it's not uh, about, okay, how many people watching or, or how many comments or likes I'm getting. Because um, otherwise, then I can continue thinking that, oh my God, I'm new, nobody knows me. Who knows the information that I want to share is correct or not? So I can go and continue thinking about. So with that, my focus was I just want to share information, have guests on my show for them to share the information based on the topic I want, and I'm having fun with it. And I leave it uh, to that. So, yeah, because otherwise, and it comes back to the confidence part as well, because if I had to go think about I want comments. I want like, I want people to um, contact me to be able to work with them. I would have never started with a show. And maybe even after a few months, I would have quit because you don't get a lot. And then what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I, I think you're, you're absolutely right. It's not just about how you're feeling in the moment. It's about that fact that you can stick with it because you have confidence in just reaching those two people or just getting that message out there. That is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Ramonda, I, I, I was just thinking about when I was live on your show, you sent me a list of questions that we would probably be following as a structure because, which is very thoughtful for an introvert that gives you time to think about what the questions are. I'm an extrovert, so I did not send you any <laughs> questions, <laughs> which must have made you go, "What are we? What's what's going to be coming?" And what you know, and and so, I in my business life, as in my my corporate business life, I you know do a lot of work around introversion and and extroversion, and the fact that for an extrovert, we don't need to think things through in their heads. So it was useful for me to read the questions but I would have been fine without them. And then for you, it would have been very useful to have the questions and know what's coming next, because that, you know, is a, 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 a gives you time to think about it, but also gives you some control over what am I going to say here and so on. Yes, so I, yes. I, it's, yeah, go. No, I was going to say, if this was three years ago that you would have asked me to be on your show and you would not have sent any question from the minute you asked me till the minute we started, I would have been stressed out, worrying, oh my God, how I'm going to do, I don't know the answer, I need to know. 
but now it was for one i had a thought one time i not i i didn't receive no questions but besides that it was relaxed it was calm so like i said working on myself it boosting my confidence so <laughs> I think that's really beautiful. And I think I think it's it's important to acknowledge our introversion or extroversion preference. It's not that the extroverts are the ones who can go online and do lives or, you know, comment in live time. It, it's we all can. It is just about how we think about that, because we were only ever going to be talking about your story and your business. And those are all things that you know about. Mm -hmm. And so I think yeah. it's a good example of of kind of that. Well, I can show up because I'm going to be doing my best. Mm -hmm. Yep, indeed. <laughs> OK, so this might throw you a little bit, um, but it won't because, uh, again, this is you have the answers inside of you. But I'd like to ask you a little bit about if you had a cabaret career. So mm -hmm. cabaret is for me anyway, is about uh, a, a live show, usually face to face pre before COVID, uh, in a small venue. So it's much more intimate. It's not a big theater. And there are usually performances of either uh, singing or some form of dance or burlesque or drag uh, or comedy or you know contortion aerial any of those kind of things and because it's a smaller venue it's a smaller it's a more intimate kind of connection with your audience than if you were in a huge theater and so sometimes people will perform you know burlesque or drag or whatever in in huge auditoriums and it is still a cabaret uh, act but it's not a, a cabaret and so when we're talking about uh confidence through cabaret anyway the lessons come from you know if you were on stage and what that would be like and you know and showing up taking up space engaging with your audience fearlessly because you can see them all you can make eye contact if you wanted to with everybody in the audience which is where it's very intimate um so if you were going to be performing cabaret uh, you were going to do something on a on a live stage in a cabaret what would you like to perform um my first answer would be the burlesque one but then i would go and think okay so where will it be will it be here in st martin or will it be abroad because here i think i would have been too shy to do a burlesque i would have been doing a dancing but then if i had to do it abroad then I think it would be burlesque. <laughs> oh, and is that because you because you're with complete strangers where there's nobody's going to know you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, interesting, interesting. And that's the same with if you're doing a business presentation or you're going on live. Some of us prefer to have you know people we know as our audience, and some prefer to have complete strangers as our audience. That's interesting. That, mm -hmm. That's very interesting. And I think, you know, there's always that fear of being judged. And, you know, if, you, if you're if you thinking people might know me or people might hear about it locally, then there's that fear of judgment that can come up. For some mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I think for me, it's not the fear of judgment, but I think it's more, maybe you can call it fear, but I think it's more the fear of just having to present something in front of people that I know. So, um, and I don't, yeah, the judgment part, now nah, that doesn't play so much of a role, but it's just me having to show up in front of people that I know. <laughs> so what would happen if you were performing in front of people that you know? Um, I think maybe you can call it judgment, I think, but I would, I I don't know, I would get shy um, um, because all the eyes are on me and then they know me. Um, not so much that they might go and judge 
what I'm doing, but I think just the fact that they know me, that I'm out there, that I'm I'm present there doing something to show what I can do and what I know. So I I think I think yeah, I think it's that. <laughs> Interesting. But once Interesting. I okay. finish with what once you finish no I was going, yeah out once I finish with performing or doing whatever I have to do, then then that's it for me. So I don't go and think that, oh my God, how they would have liked it or not like it. So it's more the, the first two, three minutes that I have to come in front of them. <laughs> and I think that's a really important lesson is that we, you know, once we've performed, we can't go back and analyze it. We can learn from it. But if we go back and criticize, then that's where it, it is a very difficult thing to do because that gives us fear for next time. I don't mm -hmm. watch my videos from performing for quite a long time. So I, because I know that I'll criticize it and that doesn't help yeah. me the next time. So yeah. I keep the videos, mm -hmm. but it's several months before I can watch it. And then yeah. I can watch Otherwise and I can learn and grow. Fun. Yeah, it does. So mm -hmm. what prop would you want to have? If you could have one thing on stage with you, what would you want to have? Um, um, how do you call them in English? The, the wire thing, the one to blow air. Um, you know those things that you can open and when you're hot, you move it so you oh, can a get fan. a little air? Yes, a, a fan. fan. A fan. Yes, yes. I would have one of those. <laughs> Why a fan? Um, Because I can see myself already that if there's a, a minute that my shyness comes up or, or that I want to retract myself, I can kind of like open it cover half of my face, pretend like it's something I'm supposed to be doing, and then close it back and then continue. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. It's like a it's like a, a barrier for protection if we need it. It's security. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so my last cabaret question, Ramonda, is what would your stage name be? If we were introducing you to Join us on stage, please. Welcome to the stage. What would your stage name be? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, but I would say Tatiana. Ah, that's pretty. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> so the reason that I ask these questions is because I think, you know, even if people don't want to be on stage, then to be able to think about, in, given that I would be performing, how, what would I put my, how would I present myself? What would I put out there? And what, what kind of prop would I need either to hide or to hold more space? And what kind of energy would I bring in terms of a character? And our stage name is a very strong part of that energy. So, you know, when we're you know, thinking about, oh, I'm worried about this, or what if this happens, or, you know, and, and we start to create some of the critic or the imposter voice in our head then we always have a choice, like we were talking about before, to be able to go to that other person. What would Tatiana do? Well, she would get on that stage and she would perform, do you know? And it's that, it's that, it's that strength and power, unapologetic fierceness. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So I love to encourage because people to have that. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Indeed, if if you think about it and you kind of like, um, at least for the beginning, let, let me put it on myself. If I would maybe create like a, a different persona kind of thing or at least a different name, then 
yeah, I, I can see it indeed helping me to get over the stage fright, to get over the shyness, and then slowly getting back into myself. It would exactly. be more confident exactly. because hey, it's, a, it's a different persona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and Tatiana is a different person. Tatiana mm -hmm. is there to perform and connect and, you know, be fierce and strong and powerful and any any of the, the description that you would have for Tatiana. Yeah, yeah. And Indeed. the point is we can tap into that anytime we want to. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So thank that you for thank you for playing. That is what? you're welcome. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you have Tatiana there. Whenever you whenever you start to, to to have a few difficult days in a row, you can go, okay, but what's Tatiana saying about this? Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm really going to use it. <laughs> yeah, it's fun actually because you know I I love to collaborate with guests and and meet up with them again and you know kind of get an update or you know share what what programs they're doing in in live conversations and you know promote it and and so on and it's it's so much fun when I meet people a few months later and they've still got that voice so I'm expecting to hear good things for. Tatiana's future. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find you? So they can find me on my Facebook page on the uh, Mindful Elevation Caribbean One Word or on my Instagram page at the mindful.elevation.caribbean. Beautiful. So I'm going to see if this will add because my StreamYard keeps, there we go. My StreamYard keeps changing yes. it. So I'm just, I've just okay. copied the link in there. If you're listening uh, online on podcast, Mindful Elevation Caribbean is all one word. Uh, and you'll, you'll be able to, to find that on Facebook. And then for Instagram, then it's mindful.elevation.caribbean. Um, if yes. you have any difficult d difficulty finding the, the the site or the connections, then reach out to Confidence to Cabaret, and I will send you the links myself because it is it is such fun to be able to connect with energy that is so positive and so purposeful, like your work, Ramonda. I, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. I, I I'm having fun. It's it's nice. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. So so I guess um I, I want to ask one last question, which is what is your favorite lesson that you've learned in life? Um that there is a time for everything. Um that I can stop worrying and stressing about things that still have to happen. And also mm, trying, doing my best to be here, to enjoy what's happening now. And then focusing on me, trying to work on myself and trying to work on the goals that I want without having to feel guilty that I'm uh, doing that. I love that. I think that's really beautiful to be to be happy and, and enjoy now is is just such a such a great message. Uh, if you want to mm -hmm. work with Mindful Elevation and you want to uh, get to know a little bit more about Ramonda's work, then do get in touch uh, and you can then find out a little bit more about it. You can get a flavor for it on the socials. I think sometimes we underestimate how difficult it is for people to reach out to us. You know, we say, oh, I'll reach out, you know, join the group or, you know, jump on a call with me and we can find out if we're a good fit. When people are not confident 
it can be really hard to do that. Yes, yes, it is. It is. And that's why, for example, on my social medias, I try not to only um, tell them to give me a call, but I also try to give tips here and there. And I also try to show, okay, how I'm doing it when it comes to the stress for them to, even though they're not feeling so confident to give me a call or send me a message, they're already getting something that they can start trying. And then like that to at least make a start in their own life because it's indeed if i have to look at myself you tell me okay give me a call i'm like yeah but then what do i need to go talk about i don't i'm not ready to talk about that yet but if i see on your social that okay you're talking about a topic you, you're giving a little snippet here and there i'm going to try i'm like okay this might work maybe next week i will feel a little bit more confident because i try what the person is saying I can send an email. Let me see what I can get. Or let me see how the interaction will go in a way of saying. I love that. I love that you really understand that and and you help people in, as you say, take small steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's the important thing. Just small steps, no big steps. Because when we were born, it's also we had to crawl first. And even when we started walking, it was one step here, falling, getting up. So it's the same as, as now. It's funny, isn't it? Because we forget that. It, we forget that we fell when we took yeah. steps. And Correct. now when we take a step, mm -hmm. we expect a positive result. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And it, it, it doesn't always work like that. And even the first step might be positive, but then the second and the third might not be so positive. So you still have to be willing to continue taking the steps. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being You're here welcome. with us and I appreciate you sharing. Get in touch with Mindful Elevation Caribbean on uh, Instagram or on Facebook. Uh, reach out to Ramonda and and uh, find out more about her work. Uh, thank you for sharing in the Confidence Through Cabaret community. It is such a pleasure to know you. Thank you, the same. It has been very fun and very nice and very calming. Thank you. <laughs> and very, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good and that that's that and and that is you know like you know, a lot of us would find it not calming to not have the questions and all the things we've talked about and you know it is just about get on the call or get on the live or get on the podcast or or make you know put a post up and it's not as scary it's never as scary as we think yeah Correct. We make it more scarier than it is. Yes. Yeah. As long as you're trying yeah. to have fun with it, it will be good. See, I love that. I absolutely adore that. I think that trying to have fun is the point. I, I just, it's such a core part of my values about having fun. And I love that you get that. I so appreciate you for that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for listening on podcast uh, or watching on YouTube. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, get in touch. Share your comments. Share your favorite tips or your key takeaways or any questions that you might have. It's great to interact. It's it's really, you know, not scary. Um we're friendly people and we love to interact. So do get in touch with us. Uh, Ramonda, thank you again. I thank am Heather Jean and I, I'm so appreciative of you being here. Oh, I want to remind too. all thank of the you. listeners, thank you. Just reminding you that it is your body and it is your world and it is your stage. Take up space. And if you're watching this on, on YouTube, then take up space and stretch and own your space unapologetically, yes. as I'm doing now. And Ramon is doing, I love that. Yes. Uh, if you're exactly. listening on podcast, 
if you're listening on podcast and you can't see that, you know that you can take up space. You deserve it and you get to own it. Thank you all for listening. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>